What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and Friday in the stock market we see a continuation of the bear market relief rally and we're coming into some very critical resistance levels. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So Friday in SPY, we were up 2.45% and we did get a gap up and we did run and close at the high of the day. So this is an extremely bullish looking candle. Anytime that you gap up and close at the high of the day is about the bullish candle that you could possibly get. Not only did the bulls defy the trend and go higher, they gapped up which left the opportunity for bears to short at the open and try to close that gap, and they still closed at the high of the day. So without a doubt, this is a very impulsive bear relief rally, and if you know anything about bear markets, they usually are very impulsive when you start to get these counter trend rallies. So if you rewind about a week ago, I was telling you to prepare for this rally with SPY above 393. And this is still going to be your very critical support level. However, now that we have SPY back over the 20 simple moving average for two days in a row, you could start to raise your risk level to about 403. Remember, anytime you're trading long positions in a bear market, you don't want to get overly greedy, but I do think we have more upside. At this point, the bulls will be gaining more confidence, short sellers will start covering their positions, and people sitting in cash are going to start FOMOing into this rally because they think they're about to miss out. But I warn you not to do that because this is more than likely just a bear market relief rally, which means we will get to one of these resistance levels and then start to sell off yet again. So I don't believe we came all this way and we're not going to at least test the 50 EMA, which is just below 419. But as you know, we do have a very critical resistance here at 420. I still think it is very possible with all of the short sellers, all of the bearish sentiment and all of the cash on the sidelines that we overshoot that level and get to 430. And that is why I drew this counter trend rally going to 432 weeks ago. And that is why we're currently planning for that. However, as you know, on this channel, we only follow price action. So even though we have an idea of what might happen, we need to follow price action, which means if we see any reversals at any of this resistance, or even now before we get to resistance, we can't rule out the possibility that we're going for another leg lower because we still do have valid downside price targets as long as we have a bear trend. Now, what will snap the bear trend will be if we start to pull back from resistance, form a higher low, and then break out and form another higher high. That is what bull trends consist of, and so far we still have lower lows and lower highs. On the daily chart, you can see that we did break out above 408, so we do have a daily higher high if you're comparing it to the high at 408. However, we do not yet have the higher low and we have not yet bounced from that higher low and made another higher high. So we are still in a bear trend until we get that price action. So right now on SPY, you have two very critical support levels at 408 and 403. And it is very likely if we break down below 403 that we're coming back down to retest the lows or go for that next leg lower. So if we start breaking down below 403, you're getting a lot more cautious and then you're looking for very critical support at 393, the previous low right around 385, and then if we break below 385, you're looking for that next leg lower at 376 and 370. So in the short term, it is all bullish until we break through some of this critical support with upside resistance here at 420 and 430. And yes, we could go higher than those levels, but those are the most critical levels that are within striking distance, so watch those levels very closely. Also, one very common mistake that a lot of people make during bull rallies like this is they don't trust the rally because it's going up on lower volume, but I can assure you that is not a real problem you need to be concerned about. Anybody who has ever back-tested the stock market and gone and looked at bullish rallies can tell you that you don't need high volume for a bull rally, you only need high volume for big selling. Do not just look at low volume buying as bearish because that would be a very rookie mistake and you can miss some very strong upside rallies if that's all you're looking at. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 3.26% and just like SPY, we gapped up and closed all the way at the high of the day, so a very bullish looking candle, and we did close at a daily higher high closing above 306. So from here, the bulls are likely in full control in the short term until we get to some of this critical resistance to the upside, which the bears are currently waiting at. The next critical resistance levels for the triple Qs will be 318, 320, and then 330. To the downside, you're looking for critical support and risk levels at 306 and our 20 simple moving average, which is also our gap fill at 301. 
And if we break down below this support level at 301, you're looking for a retest of right around 293 or the previous low right around 285. If all of that support fails, you're looking for the very early warning sign on a break below 301, which means we could still finish out this bear market and go down for that next leg lower at 276.8 or 269.5. However, I continue to tell you that in the short term, this is a bull trend and we did break out to a higher high. So you really should be looking at this upside resistance until price action confirms a reversal. You're going to know it very clearly when the reversal comes because you're going to see bearish price action yet again. And on smaller time frames, you will see a very clear rejection and you will see price action coming down to test this support at 301. So know these risk levels. And as I always tell you, make sure your trading plan tells you what you're going to do, whether you get either scenario. You should know what you're going to do if we continue to see this impulsive bull rally above 301 and you should know exactly what you're going to do if the price action slices right down through that support and we continue to trend lower. This is still a downtrend until it's not and we don't yet have a higher low than another breakout of that higher low to form another higher high. So we are still in a bear market and we need to respect that even though this rally likely does still have legs that can take it higher before we get that reversal. In the Dow Jones, we were up 1.72% and we did test the 50 EMA as resistance and we did gap up and we did close at the high of the day. So we're seeing very bullish price action across all three indices. On the Dow Jones, you're looking for a critical support, which are your risk levels down here at 326 and 324. And we do have a gap to fill right around 322. The next bullish breakout will be a close above 333 and then we will likely see the bears retreating all the way back to 340 but there will be a lot of bears at that level as you can tell from my price projections we only have about another one and a half percent until we get to the expected resistance but since we are going up very quickly we could get to 340 which means our resistance trend line will be right around 342. So at this rate, we are definitely getting a lot of FOMO and a lot of short squeezing. So if we start breaking above 333, we could see another very strong impulse to 340. And then we would be looking for very strong price action reversal from that level. Remember, we need to get the higher low now that we have the higher high. So continue to watch the price action. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 2.69% and we did get that bullish breakout above 183. And we're very close to testing the 50 EMA right around 189. And we also have very critical resistance right around 191 to 192. Above the 190s will look like a bullish breakout from our resistance trendline, which means we could start seeing higher highs and higher lows. And if you're looking at IWM, we do have a higher low and higher high situation. So the small caps could be telling us that we are reversing the bear market and getting ready to go into a bull trend. So on IWM, you're looking for very critical support now at 183, which is the previous high. And you know this is a higher low, higher high situation now. So in the short term, IWM is in a bull trend. So do not ignore these warning signs if you're still overly bearish on this market. This is not something I would be ignoring the fact that IWM is forming higher highs and higher lows. So it will be very critical if we break down below 183 and below 180 that we do hold that support at 175. Otherwise, the bears are still likely in full control and we could still go close that gap at 165.7. On the ARK ETF, we were up just over 6.5% and ARK is very close to losing the bear trend if it can get a bullish close above 47 and then 52. Remember, this isn't bullish price action until we get higher highs and higher lows, which means we need to close above 52. But in the short term, we do have a higher high and higher low, but that doesn't mean the bear market is over just yet. If we get rejected from our resistance trend line, we could still make that next leg lower and still hit that price target at 33.7. But that is a lot less likely if we start getting daily closes above 52. So look for downside support at 43 and 40. Otherwise, we're retesting the previous low at 35 or hitting our downside price target. On the VIX, we were down about 6.5% on Friday and we're very close to retesting this low at 25. And it will be a bullish development if the VIX starts closing below 25 and below 24 but we haven't yet seen that, so we can't just assume it'll happen. If the VIX continues to crush down below 24, that will be bullish. Otherwise, you're looking for another spike in volatility off of these previous lows to spike the VIX back above 30, and that will go hand in hand with a continuation of the bear market. On Bitcoin, we're currently up about 1% with Bitcoin still trading just above our support zone at 28,000. And as you can tell from the Bollinger Bands, we are getting a very strong squeeze, which means we are about to see a very impulsive move. If I had to guess, the next impulse will be all the way back up to resistance at 37,000. But remember, the stock market does not care what I think. 
So you need to watch this very critical support zone at 28,000. If I'm wrong and the impulse is to the downward direction, you're looking for strong support at 25,000. Otherwise, our price target is all the way down there at 20,000. Because we do have a bear trend and we do have a bear flag look, you cannot completely rule out the possibility that I am wrong about 28,000 and that we do make another leg lower. So don't just throw all of your money in at this level, assuming that this is the bottom. However, I do have strong conviction that we will get a bullish impulse off this level. So I am still watching that level at 28,000 very closely for a bullish spike all the way back up to 37,000 or 40,000. On Nvidia stock, we were up 5.38% and we did get two daily closes back over the 20 simple moving average. So we're very likely going to test that resistance right around 199 to about 200. The next time we'll be getting bullish on this stock will be the break above 210, even though in the short term, we are still bullish for a retest of this upside resistance. If we can close above 210, we will likely go into a very strong bull market to close all these upside gaps. Otherwise, you are looking for a rejection from resistance for another leg lower because we still do have a valid downside price target at 150. However, this is looking like a double bottom look, so I am getting more bullish the more I see price action going higher. So the break above 182 does look like a bullish breakout with a double bottom, which could easily take us all the way up to 210 or higher. So I am very bullish on this stock with the risk level being right around 179. So watch that support level very closely. On Tesla stock, we were up 7.33% and Tesla is coming back up to our resistance zone at 762. And above that level, we will likely retest the 50 EMA right around 844. We're back on the bull above 900, but we still have a lot more upside before we test that resistance. So you still need to respect the fact that this is lower highs and lower lows. A rejection from any of this resistance could take us back down to retest the low at 620 or make a new low at 570, but we will still have support at $700. On Apple stock, we were up just over 4% and we did close over the 20 simple moving average, but we closed just below that resistance at 150. Above 150, we're getting a lot more bullish, but the bullish breakout is going to be a close above 156. So at this point, look for a test of resistance at 156. Otherwise, we'll likely break down back below the 20 simple moving average at 148 and close the gap down here at 144. Below 144, we still have support at 137. And if we break 137, the next leg lower will likely take us to 130. So things are looking more bullish in the short term, but you have to remember these are still bear markets until we see higher highs and higher lows. And right now we are looking like we are just getting that counter trend rally. On the financial sector, we were up 1.69% and the financial sector is very close to getting that bullish breakout back over the 50 EMA. Otherwise, we are looking for a rejection at this level and a continuation to the downside or at least test some downside support to make a higher low. As you can tell, with the financial sector looking stronger and breaking the bear trend, that is extremely bullish for the S&P 500. The industrial sector was up just over 2% and we did close above some resistance and we're very close to testing the 50 EMA as resistance. The healthcare sector was up 1.66% and we did get the bullish breakout on an increasing volume and we're closing above our resistance trendline and the 50 EMA. From here, I'll be looking for the healthcare sector to start developing a bull trend and confirming higher prices. On the energy sector, we did get another 52 week closing high going up 1.83% and it still looks like the energy sector is trying to get to the next price target at $90 and we still have the bull trend. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, we are still labeling this as a bear market counter trend relief rally, but that does not mean we can't continue to go higher because we still do have upside price targets that are very valid. So understand in the short term, we are in a bull trend, but in the longer term, we are still in a bear market. So you can't get overly bullish if we start to see price action reversing until we get that higher low and higher high, which we could be very close to getting. We saw it in IWM and we even see it in the ETFs like ARK-K. So you can't completely rule out the possibility that the bulls are coming back and they're going to send the market back into a bull trend. But you just need to be very cautious while we're in this bear market because all bear markets have these strong relief rallies and that doesn't mean the market is going back into a bull market. So watch these critical levels very closely and please use proper risk management and understand the market can reverse from any of these resistance levels at any point and then continue to trend lower. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. Even in the bear market of 2008, Bank Trade Alerts beat the market that year and had a very positive return. If you're looking for more information or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis and bring new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Discord, 
Discord community. You can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.